Okay, let's uh, go ahead and change some of this lighting now. Um, let's go to the system, properties. Now we can change the sky. Let's just make this black. And let's make this nighttime. We're not going to make it very dark, just because we do want to be able to see somewhat. Um, now we want we want to change it so that we are actually glowing. And I don't think we... Okay, we did that on here. We can copy and paste that just so that we can add that to our enemies. If we didn't already. I don't remember if we did. So, nope, looks like we did not make them glow. So, any color we want. White is fine. Remember, even though they're glowing white, the color of them is still red. So, as far as the program is concerned, that'll still work out fine when we have it so that they're chasing after the white pucks. It's the actual color, not the glow color. Um... So we might have to add this in. Do we need to add this in over here? Uh, sure. Let's run this again, see how it looks with this new... Okay. So there are enemies glowing. Still a little bit too dark, so let's add some lights now. So what we're going to do, again, this object tool. And we're going to add. Now, the thing about lights is that you can only add eight of them per game, which is pretty limiting. Um, Color-wise, uh, doesn't really matter. It's all fine. White actually looks fine. So, and the height we could change, but we want it to be far enough away to make it a good lighting. So. Let's just clone this. Um, we don't want to make it creatable because then that'll give us one fewer light to use since you can only use eight. So we're just going to pick it up, clone it, hit the right trigger again, clone it, clone, zoom out a little bit. I don't know if I'm actually putting these in the right places. So this is just where I'm choosing to put it. You can, of course, put it anywhere you want, put it in the middle of the arena or just on the side of the wall. Okay, there you go. Eight lights per world. Um, I forgot because I am I tried to clone it rather than just set it down, even though we're on the last one. So let's just set it down with A. And now let's run this and see if it looks a bit better. So now when we, okay, there you go. That is looking pretty good. Now it looks like we have a pretty full game here. Uh, one thing I forgot to do, you can actually see the lights there. And I don't mean the light that they're casting, but the actual little orb. And I don't think that looks very good. They added in the new patch, they made it so you can add, make items invisible, which you couldn't originally do. And it's a really great addition. So. Uh, what we're going to do is go, well, we're not going to do this to all of them, but if you go down as we've done with the rock, we can make these invisible. And then now if you play this, I'm not sure which one it is that I just changed. Uh, one of these, there you go. That one is gone. You can see it there, and that one you can see is invisible. So that's good. Um, I don't really like this glow color. They're all kind of blending together, so let's change that. Let's find our enemies. See, now things are getting harder to, to find. There they are. It also doesn't help that my TV's kind of dark when I'm recording stuff. Um, so let's change the glow color to... let's try red. We already made them red, so that makes enough sense. Let's just see if that works. Yeah, okay. So now you can see them. That is looking pretty good. Yeah, 
And it looks like our game is pretty complete. Uh, we haven't actually played a full game to see if we, if the win mechanic works correctly, but I think it will work because we might as well just play this right now. If I can actually win, who knows? Normally, if you're testing it, you should just set yourself invulnerable in the settings of your character and that way you can make sure that the uh, end of the game works properly even if you can't beat your own game uh, which is nothing wrong with you want the game to be pretty tough okay there we go winner so the timer got down to zero and it won the game and that is about it let's see are we missing anything you can always you can endlessly tweak things um oh did i explain that uh the reason i made this the ground so far out here is because you can still see it even if you have the, the lighting all the way off you can still see the edge so that way if we made it big enough well you can kind of see it at the sides of the screen but um it just looks a little bit better that way so, um, of course, in the final game that I made, I made it uh, so that the left trigger uses a nuke and that destroys all the enemies and things like that. And you can you can download this game, uh, well, not this one, but the one that I made just like this ahead of time. Uh, you can download and look at all the program settings if you want to learn how to do stuff like that. There's just and there's some there are two extra enemies in there, and things like that. Now there's one very important thing that we haven't done yet, and that is save our world, which normally you should do towards the beginning and periodically through it. Although it does seem to auto save, I'm not sure exactly how often it auto saves, but it does do that. Um, so we're just gonna hit. The start button, save the world, and a uh, thing to note is that when you save it, it takes a screenshot of where your camera is. So make sure you position your camera where you want it before you go to save it. So now we can choose any of these things. Let's go to name and grab my keyboard that doesn't have a very long cord and delete that. We're just going to say this game is called Generic Wars. That's great. Um, and you can add some tags and things if you want. If you already have it saved and you go to save it again uh, without changing the title, it'll ask you if you'd like to increment it. Actually, I can just show you right now. Um, let's go to save. So it's asking if we want to overwrite it. If we hit Y, you can see the upper right hand corner. It says v00 and so we can actually change um, what version and actually you can do that right here with the right stick if you'd like to change the version number of it you can do that so that's really nice and that way if people have already downloaded a previous version they know if if you've put up a new one I guess that pretty much wraps up this tutorial uh, I hope you learn some things and uh, I'd love to see what you can create with Kodu. Uh, you can make a video response to this if you put up any levels or if you modify this one or whatever. Um, let me go and load the real version of this that I made ahead of time. We didn't do this adding um, the control screen which is something you definitely want to do. I'll show you how to do that right now. Um, so as you can see, here's my finished version of the level, and it has a much better path in the middle, and everything looks a little bit better. Three enemies over here. So on this rock, what I just did um, was just have it right when the game starts. It says something once, and what it says is, you know, just blah, blah, blah talking about uh, what the controls are. Actually, if you get out of that and you have a keyboard connected, you can actually edit this text right on here. And how you get those little symbols, like for the left stick, is you just do a, 
the angled brackets, like in HTML, and left stick is LS. They're called glyphs, these little icons. There's a whole list of them online if you go to the Kodu blog. Um, but they're pretty obvious ones. You know, if you do angled brackets with the letter A in the middle, that's the A button. X is X button. LS is left stick. RS is right stick. Um, LT is left trigger and stuff like that. You know, you can do Apple and it'll put the icon of the Apple there. One thing I never mentioned was using uh, the different LAN types, which is pretty important for other games. We, we're not using any of it in this. But with the different land, you can have it. Um, you can have like a re, like regain health. So if your character moves over a certain type of land, I'll actually just show you a quick program. Who is this? Is this my guy? Um, yes, it is. So let's just say you do something like when uh, where when on land, and then you choose the type. Here's the annoying thing is that uh, it doesn't actually show you after we, like, so let's just say this is what we're using. So it doesn't actually show you the icon of the land type. So you have to actually click on this just to, if you want to remember which one it was. Um, so let's say when you're on that, then we can say combat, uh, heal, you know, five points or whatever to, yeah. So something like that. Um, and you know, you'd do a more complicated program than that, probably with pages and things. And that way you could have a little area, like say, you know, if you play F zero or something, they've got that strip where you can drive on and it'll gain health. So you could do something like that in a game. Okay, well, this video has been pretty long and actually my tape is going to run out in a few minutes. So I guess we should wrap this up. Um, if you have any questions, you know, there's the Kodu forum that you can go to. I'll, I have links to this stuff on crackedrabbitgaming.com. And if you want to see some other videos, uh, some other levels I've made that uh, aren't just totally generic like this one, um, you can also go to the website and I've got some other videos and things. So I hope this helped. All right. Bye.